Hey man, if you're new to Pro Tools or you're an artist who wants to record themselves without a whole bunch of frustration, this video is for you. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com and of course, I'm here to help you to record and mix better and faster. Now, all of us are not professional audio engineers. Some of us are just getting started. Some of us are simply artists who just want to be able to facilitate our own recordings in Pro Tools. Well, this video is here to help you to get started with recording in Pro Tools in the best way possible to get y'all the best possible outcome. Let's jump into the session, all right? Now, First thing first, the first thing that you want to do is set your playback engine. Now, the playback engine in Pro Tools determines which audio device your um, inputs and outputs are going to be routed to. So whichever um, interface you have your microphone connected to or wherever your headphones are plug up, plugged up to, wherever you're going to be recording from and listening from, that is what you want to set as your playback engine. To do that, once you launch Pro Tools, you'll probably be confronted with the dashboard. We're just going to start off by going ahead and hit cancel on that. We'll be able to open it back in a minute. Then I'm going to go to the setup menu, choose playback engine. And right here at the top, the device that I want to choose is going to be whatever audio device that you want. In this case, I'm using my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, so I'm going to choose that as my playback engine. The next thing that you want to do while you're inside of this dialog box is set your hardware buffer size. A good rule of thumb for the hardware buffer size setting here is going to be low for recording, high for mixing. And in this case, since we're focusing on a recording session, I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 128 samples. I find that that's low enough to reduce any latency that you might incurred during the recording process, but also enough, high enough to give you enough processing power for whatever plugins you might want to use during your recording. If you want more information about uh, the hardware buffer size and all of that, make sure you sign up for my Pro Tools certification course down below. That's all I'm going to do in this dialog box here, and I'm going to hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and start our session. I'm going to go up to File, hit Create New. And inside the dashboard, a few things that we want to do here. All right, first, Inside of here, this is where we actually get to set all of the parameters for our session. Mainly, I mean, one of the first things is going to be the name. So let's just call this Wavy Session 22 because, you know, who, mean, who knows, right? So you want to name the session with something that uh, you are going to be familiar with and able to find later. All right. Next thing that I always want to do is choose a save location. So in this case, we're going to choose local storage because it's going to be saved either on our computer, our external hard drive or something like that. A local destination is what we want to use. So I'm going to choose local storage and I'm going to jump all the way to the bottom of the page here. And for me personally, I always like to just have the prompt for location um, selected. This is going to allow me to select the location every time I make a new Pro Tools session so I can be intentional about where I am saving my session files. The next thing that we're going to do is take a look at these other parameters. Now, we're not going to go too in-depth, but I'll just give you my favorite settings, okay? For bit depth, I always like to work at 32-bit floating point. My sample rate, 48 kilohertz. The file type, we'll just leave that at the default wave and I.O. settings. Let's not go with last used, but instead, let's click here and change to stereo mix. This is going to default the I.O. settings to be compatible with whatever hardware device you just chose in the playback engine and stop you from having a whole bunch of routing problems. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Now I'm going to be prompted to find a location where I want to save this. I'll just save it in my documents folder for now. And now here we go. A blank Pro 2 session. Hey, man, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Jay-Z Microphones. Jay-Z Microphones has some great, high-quality, handmade mics that are going to make your vocals and whatever else you're recording sound mwah, superior. Make sure y'all check out their website. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, let's get back to it. Now, this is where Pro Tools differs from a lot of other DAWs because it shows up completely blank. And a lot of times we don't know where to start. We don't know what to do when we are confronted with this blank window. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. One of the first things that I want to do is go ahead and import my beat. So if I'm going to be recording some vocals or something, which a lot of us are, we need to go ahead and get that beat track imported into the session. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the file menu. 
choose import audio. I'm going to find the location wherever the beat is that I want to import. And this is where it actually is kind of important here. <laughs> important, import. You see what I did there? Put a thumbs up if you like that. All right. Um, now, when you are confronted with whether you should add or copy, I'm going to always choose copy. Yours might even say convert if you're working on an MP3 or something like that. But in this case, I'm going to choose copy. Always choose copy because adding simply is going to reference that file from wherever it is. Originally, copy is going to actually make a new copy and place this all within the self-contained Pro 2 session folder. Again, I could go in depth here, but this is not what this video is about. Just trust me, choose copy or convert and move on. If you want to go in depth and learn all about the differences, what's happening here, sign up for the Pro Tools certification course down in the link, uh, down in the description. All right. So we're going to hit copy. I'm going to hit open. This is just asking me where I want to save it. And of course, I'm going to save this to a new track. So I got my new track um, set up. I, this is my beat track here. And if I'm going to be recording some vocals, eventually I'm going to also need to make some vocal tracks. But before I do that, one thing that I want to do, well, two things that I want to do is find the tempo of this session, of this beat, and also find the key, just in case I'm going to be using any auto-tune. Now, what I recommend, one, is using um, Identify Beat. I have a video. I'll link it in the description here on how you can use Identify Beat to quickly find the tempo. Now, if you're a beginner, that might be a little bit advanced, might be a little challenging for you. So what we're going to do instead is actually today, we're just going to use the new Auto-Tune Auto Key 2, which has the features to do both of the things that we're looking for. It's going to find the tempo and the key of the song to help us out. All right, so to do this, what I want to do is insert the Auto Key 2 plugin directly on the track where the beat is. Right now, I don't see my inserts here in the edit window, so I could go over to my mix window, go up to the window menu and choose mix, or use that shortcut command equal, or I could configure the edit window to see what it is that I want to see. In this case, I'm going to use my edit window view selector, which is this little little thing right there that's the edit window view selector i'm going to click on that and then i'm going to choose to show my inserts a through e and i'm going to also choose to show sins a through e because those will come into handy uh later <laughs> all right now on the inserts we're going to search up auto key all right and we got the auto key 2 plugin and i'm simply just going to play this beat for a little bit and as it's playing Pro Tools is going to be finding the tempo for me and also determining the key. All right, so we just got a tempo of 150 beats per minute. I like to use halftime, so I'm going to just drop that in half. Double click on my song start marker, which is this red flag here in the tempo ruler. If your tempo ruler isn't showing, you can always go up to the view menu, choose rulers. <laughs> and tempo, all right? So I'm gonna show my, I got my tempo ruler showing. I'm gonna double click here and enter my tempo at 75 beats per minute. That's gonna make sure that when I'm doing edits or using any time-based effects like delays, they'll be perfectly in time. We'll come back to working with the key whenever I decide to use any auto tool. Next up that I wanna do here now is simply turn the beat track down. This is where I see a lot of people make mistakes because beats are often limited and compressed and they're really loud, making it hard for us to hear our vocals as we are recording and also um, making it even more likely that you will experience some distortion as you're recording as you're trying to compensate for the level of not being able to hear yourself and you end up screaming louder or talking louder, or whatever it is, turning the vocals up louder than they need to be. So what we want to do is simply one thing you could do is just go to the volume fader of this beat track and turn it down approximately 10 db is where i would turn it down just to get started and that will give you plenty headroom to record your vocals without worrying about um, not hearing yourself and also have enough headroom so that you don't start to peak okay so now that i got that the next thing i want to do is go ahead and create an audio track so i'm going to go up to the uh, track menu hit new a mono audio track will do and let's just name this vocal all right and hit create now we got a new vocal track the first thing that i want to do on this vocal track is actually assign an input so it's important that i 
go ahead and choose the input path selector. This is in the I.O. section. And again, if this isn't showing for you, you can use this little button right here, the track views. I mean, the edit window view selector and then change over to make sure that your I.O. is showing. Or you could always just jump over to your mix window and the I.O. will be showing there as well. All right, so here on my vocal track, I'm just going to go ahead and click the input. The input is at the top. The output is at the bottom. The output is going to be defaulted to the main outputs of your system based on these I.O. settings that we've already set up. And now I'm just going to click on this input. Since my mic is on input one, that's what I'm going to choose. Make sure that you choose the appropriate input for whatever you connected your mic to your audio interface. I'm going to just click that. Hit check, check. Cool. Everything seems to be good. I'm actually getting a signal there. The next thing that I want to do is actually set my signal level um, on my audio interface. You can do this in three different ways. Nothing inside of the Pro Tools session, I should tell you, nothing inside of this session, not the fader or any plugin or anything like that, is going to actually affect your recording level. I repeat, nothing inside of Pro Tools is going to affect your recording level. So there's three ways that you can change the level of the input that's coming into your Pro Tools session, and that's going to be to adjust the preamp on your audio interface. That's going to be to move closer or further away from the microphone or you could actually if you're recording something other than a vocal you could like use the volume knob on a piece of gear or something if it has a volume output all right that's going to be the only three ways that you can actually adjust an input uh, level inside of pro tools now before i start to record i'll probably want to set up some effects one thing that i like to use while i'm recording is going to be auto tune so i'm gonna just go ahead and click on my insert path selector and let's put an auto tune plug in on here i'm going to go with auto tune pro for this and when the auto tune launches it's really important that we use the low latency feature here that way we're not giving ourselves any latency i'm going to go to the little gear icon this is our settings here and then make sure that use low latency is checked off all right now once that is checked i can go ahead and close this window or configure whatever auto tune settings that i want but before i do that i'm going to go open up my auto key plugin and make sure i hit send to auto tune so that that key of d minor that was detected gets sent over to my auto tune plugin all right nice and neat i'm done with that i can just close that out another thing that i like to do on my track is actually have some type of reverb set up, at least a reverb effect. Maybe you want delay, but especially for our vocalists out there, we want to hear some reverb for singers and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up real quickly. I'm going to just start off by making a new stereo aux input track. In this case, I'm going to use the shortcut shift command in. Of course, you could always go up to the track menu and hit create new. In this case, I want a stereo aux input track. And we're going to name this reverb. All right. Now on the input, on the insert of our reverb track, what I want to do is go ahead and insert a reverb plugin. In this case, let's use this D-verb. D-verb is the stock reverb plugin for Pro Tools. It sounds really good. And we'll be good with starting there with the default settings. Then what I want to do now is just go to the send selector from my vocal track. So, so we got inserts and we have sends. I'm going to go to choose one of these send selectors. And I'm just going to choose send selector A. I'm going to scroll down here and go to track. And you'll see I have the reverb send here. That's going to open up this send level window, which I can just turn up to get me a little bit of reverb. All right. And now I should be hearing reverb once I record and enable this track and I'll be ready to start recording. So before I start recording, I'm going to record and enable my track. Make sure I test my levels. Check, check, check. I'll go over to the uh Go over to the mix window and look at my levels. And what I want to be seeing is that I'm peaking at about uh, between that negative 8 and negative 12. I want my signal hovering right in there. And right now it looks like I got a good strong signal level um, right about between negative 8 and negative 12. Somewhere like negative 10 is a great place to start while you are recording. It's going to give you plenty of headroom. You can turn it up maybe a little bit more than that, but I wouldn't go too much further. That's going to be a good place uh, for your recorded signals. All right. And once you have that, now you're actually ready to record. You can go ahead and go up to the transport if you want to and hit the record button and hit play 
or you can use one of the recording shortcuts command spacebar if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, that's going to be control spacebar. If you have a numeric keypad, you can hit the number three, or you can just use the function key F12 to start recording in Pro Tools. Well, I hope you found some help in this video. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I'm here to help you record and mix better and faster. So go ahead and get started. Be dope.